Hello all and uh, welcome to Ember ABR's inaugural M webinar which will be about Galaxy Australia. My name is Jeff Christensen, um, I'm from the Emble Australia Bioinformatics Resource or Emble ABR for short and I'm your host for today. Uh, my colleagues Susanna Sabine from ANS Nectar RDS and Christina Hall from Emble ABR are behind the scenes co-hosting this webinar with me. Emble ABR is a distributed national research infrastructure and we provide bioinformatics support to life science researchers across Australia. It was set up as a collaboration with the European Bioinformatics Institute uh, or EMBL, EMBL EBI or simply EBI to maximise Australia's bioinformatics capability. Uh, we currently have 13 nodes across Australia, each of which undertake or support bioinformatics activities across a range of several key areas and these are data, compute, tools, training, platforms and standards. Uh, we at Emble ABR are very excited to be able to uh, launch this webinar program and we would really like to extend our huge thanks to ANS Nectar RDS for supporting us and agreeing to partner with us in this endeavour. Um, ANS Nectar RDS have a very long history of running a very successful webinar program focused on data management for Australian researchers. And now we at Emble ABR are looking forward to complementing these with webinars that are focused on all things bio bioinformatics. So both for card carrying bioinformaticians but as well as life scientists who are facing uh, the real challenges of becoming skilled in bioinformatics tools and techniques in an era of ever expanding amounts of bi biological data. Um, before we get started, I'd just like to mention a few housekeeping items. So all attendee um, microphones are muted during the presentation and that's just to minimize background noise. If you do have a question during this, the webinar, please type it into the uh, question box in the GoTo um, application. We'll be looking at the questions at the uh, during and at the end of each presentation and then we'll relay these to the presenters on your behalf. Um, this broadcast will be recorded and it'll be made available on the Emble ABR YouTube channel and also it will be linked to from the ANS Next RDS website and when those recordings are up online we'll notify you by email. So in today's uh, webinar, we will explore Galaxy Australia, which is an open access, free to use portal for all Australian life science researchers for performing data manipulation and analysis. We have two presenters today. Uh, firstly, we have Gareth Price, who is head of computational biology at QFAB in Brisbane. And he's also the service manager of the new and improved Galaxy Australia service. And Gareth will present on the general features of Galaxy what's changing nationally and why, and how researchers across Australia can benefit from the improved platform and service on offer. Um, after Gareth, we'll be hearing from Simon Gladman. Uh, Simon is a Galaxy Systems Architect and Tools expert who's based at Melbourne Bioinformatics, and he'll present on how Galaxy Australia is becoming better integrated and aligned with the two other large major public Galaxy services uh, in the world, and they are in the USA and Europe. Okay, so now uh, we will hand over to um, Gareth. Thank you, Jeff and Embel ABR for the opportunity to present on Galaxy Australia. Uh, personally, for me, a very exciting uh, development in the use of Galaxy. Um, so before I begin in earnest, I want to thank our development partners, QFAB, QCIF, UQRCC and Melbourne Bioinformatics, and uh, in particular also our support via uh, Bioplatforms Australia, MBL, ABR and RDS, HANS and Nectar. Uh, I thought before diving into Galaxy Australia, I would set the scene by giving uh, you all a look at Galaxy and what is Galaxy. As Jeff described in the intro, Galaxy is a open source free platform for doing data manipulation and analysis of any style of uh, genomics or NGS data. The general format of the interface uh, you can see here, you have a welcome screen in the middle. To the left you have uh, your set of executable tools to manipulate your data or analyse your data. To your right you have your history displaying both the data you've loaded and results. The middle screen is a alternating screen between 
the tools you choose to execute and the results that you get from executing those tools. Also, as we'll just talk about later, it's a place for our interactive environments as well. However, apart from executing single tools, one of the features I really wanted to mention inside Galaxy is the ability to chain your tools into a workflow. I've shown here just a, a snapshot of a workflow. Workflows are, as I just said, they're the uh, chaining of tools together, either built up front or by design, or built from your history of successful uh, data to the results journey, in which case Galaxy will essentially att attempt to work out the journey your data took and auto configure a workflow from your history. The exciting thing about workflows is you can reuse these on new data. You could simply trigger the workflow on each new data set you import, and in particular, you can send it to a new history, allowing you to keep your analyses cleanly separated um, for a return value. And a further feature of the workflows, as with many of the features inside Galaxy, the workflows are shareable with your colleagues, your collaborators. Uh, they're also publishable if you would like to share them uh, publicly. To give some context to Galaxy and to the rest of the project I'll be discussing in the next 10 to 15 minutes, um, I thought I would put up two of the very well known um, slides displaying and describing the field of genomics and NGS in general. The first one is from NIH looking at the cost per megabase of DNA sequencing coming crashing down from early in the millennium up to the latest publicly available data in 2017 where there has been a phenomenal decrease in the cost of generating sequencing leading to the second graph shown in the bottom right here which is essentially the inverse relationship showing the ever increasing amount of data being generated. In this case, we're showing the equivalent of uploads of human genome size data sets. Uh, and this is displayed in the context of uh, a couple of the larger projects, but it helps just emphasize simply that uh, there's a lot of data out there. And because there's a lot of data out there, we do need an environment to analyze it. There are, and it needs to be acknowledged, commercial environments to do this, but uh, comes with commercial, comes with cost. And the Galaxy environment was designed and is designed to help enable researchers by providing a platform that is, well, sufficiently powered to answer their particular research question, has all the tools to analyze their data, has the references, which is, can be genomes, annotations, or data sets to help guide their analyses, has the capacity to share their data, results, visualizations, and pipelines with anyone they choose to, um, and has the capacity to make these analyses reproducible through design and execution of workflows. That's everything that Galaxy does, and Galaxy Australia is one of the major players in that space. Galaxy Australia is, as you'll see over the next few slides, uh, a new entity arisen out of the merging and rationalization of a number of Galaxy services hosted in Australia, rebadged and uh, represented as Galaxy Australia uh, with the domain following in the next few slides. Uh, Galaxy Australia offers all the features that of Galaxy, which we define as core features, as well as it seamlessly integrates tools and references as requested by Australian researchers to support their work. So Galaxy Australia is not simply a mirror of international Galaxy efforts. It is tailored and will be continued to tailor those questions uh, and research as driven by Australian re researchers. What I really want to emphasize is it, as I've been hinting at, it's recently been upgraded to incorporate a number of new features. These include the ability to show the structure of your workflow, um, integrated environments for R and Python to be called inside the Galaxy workflow, and particularly exciting one for exposing Galaxy to more researchers in Australia, um, what I'm calling uh, an awareness in data sets. So when one is training in Galaxy, uh, Galaxy can be tweaked so that if anyone runs the same analysis twice, two different people, they'll be presented with the data uh, rather than ask the data to be re-analyzed each time. It's a particularly powerful feature when it comes to training undergraduates, uh, graduates, and bespoke workshops on Galaxy. 
Galaxy Australia, thanks to the upgrade, has an extended compute and quota on, on storage of your raw data uh, for analysis. It is not a storage system, but hosting of your raw data for your analysis. Uh, we've been able to make and rationalise our training resources, which I'll emphasise in the next few slides. Uh, I thought I would give a couple of technical details. So Galaxy Australia has over 600 tools now, and importantly, tool versions. So if you are attempting to repeat a legacy analysis or a particular published workflow, you should be able to access tool versions where they are still applicable to the environment. Uh, Galaxy Australia also hosts over 200 different reference genomes, and these have been, again, indexed uh, for rapid analyses in their appropriate tools. I just wanted to mention that Galaxy Australia Service Upgrade is part of the BioDevil or Data Enhanced and User Enhanced Virtual Lab project, and more information can be found at the ANS Nectar RDS website on that. And, and lastly, you probably had a chance to read, uh, I didn't want to steal Simon's thunder. He will be presenting on more elements of what I've defined as core and Australian there in the next presentation. So the DEVIL project, BioDEVIL project, has uh, three major aims I wanted to emphasise here that have helped shape Galaxy Australia. The first is the rationalisation and re-architecture of the publicly managed GVL, um, Galaxy Services. So in particular for this talk, that was Galaxy Tute for training, Galaxy Melbourne and Galaxy Queensland have been rationalised into a Galaxy Australia at usegalaxy.org.au and incorporate all the features of Galaxy Australia as well as Docker environments for RStudio and Python. The second major aim, and will be uh, predominant of Simon's talk to follow, is the harmonisation uh, of Galaxy Australia uh, with Galaxy Main in America and Galaxy Europe. This is uh, an effort to give all galaxies uh, a look, similar look and feel, and importantly, from our point of view, it allows us to feedback and help drive development at an international level. The, the third major aim of the DEVIL project, apologies, my screen's just jumped. is the rationalisation and expansion of existing training efforts within Galaxy. So uh, Galaxy training material can be found at our GitHub site shown there on the screen. And as I said earlier, this incorporates new features to take advantage of the uh, classic cooking show. Here's one I prepared earlier option, which is context in where environment for training sessions that present users with results already generated for a particular tool and setting. Um, hard to emphasize here just how powerful that will be in uh, training people for Galaxy. We also um, recognize- Just a moment, Gareth. Gareth, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt, but we're not actually seeing your screen. We're seeing no. your front awesome. of the slides, but we're not seeing you in presentation. So we won't oh, actually, so it has actually see that slide that you just- yep. Uh, thank you very much. I don't know what happened there. Yes. Can you see it now? We can now see Devil Project's aims, yep. Thank you. So I'll just re-emphasise there, aim three, the rationalisation and expansion of training efforts, which is uh, featured on our GitHub site shown hopefully now on the screen. Uh, also, in an effort to expand our training efforts, we will be running via the EMBLL ABR Train the Trainer session. Um, the expansion of Australian-wide national trainers for Galaxy. And through that, we are committing over the remainder of 2018 to conduct a minimum of three, both virtual and physical training events. So please do stay tuned for those um, if you're interested in learning more about how to use Galaxy. Galaxy Australia, through the rationalisation of Galaxy Melbourne and Galaxy Queensland, means we have capacity to pour more resources into user support. User support yeah, is get sought or can be sought via the help function inside Galaxy Australia, where there will be support. There will be the wiki out to the International Galaxy Project efforts. Uh, a very nice feature called interactive tours to allow you to step through using Galaxy, this is a relatively new feature. And again, for those wishing to orientate themselves in Galaxy Australia, I do highly recommend the interactive tours. However, if you do need 
help, there is help at genome.edu.au. And there is also via the gvl.org.au learn page, a number of tutorials to step through some of the core activities as featured in Galaxy Australia. I recommend going to that website if you also want to learn more about how to use Galaxy Australia. You can stay in touch with Galaxy Australia via the GVL or the Genomics Virtual Lab website, which will be also getting an upgrade soon. The Twitter account, Galaxy Australia, the Galaxy Australia community as hosted by EMBL ABR, uh, shown there. And finally, and as a reminder for Galaxy Australia, it's accessed via usegalaxy.org.au. And before I finish and open up for questions, I just want to emphasise finally that not only is it uh, easy to remember website, it's also very easy to get on. It is free to all the researchers in Australia and to your collaborators. Uh, simply registration takes only about a minute. You require your email address, password generation and you're in. We would recommend to all users to use your academic or institutional uh, email if possible. And that only remains now to thank uh, the BioDevil team members for supporting the upgrade of Galaxy Australia and continuing to tune its features over the remainder of 2018, including Simon Derrick as the main system administrators, Anna and Igor as our trainers, Nguyen, Christina and Helen, all supporting the activities of Galaxy Australia. And thank you for your time. Um, okay, so thank you, Gareth, very much. Um, at the moment, there's no questions in the question box. Um, however, all attendees, please, if you do not have any questions, please just write them in the box and we can um, ask Gareth them. Um, I think at the moment we'll move straight on to Simon and then at the end we'll ask questions to both uh, Gareth and Simon. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Jeff. Um, good day, everybody. Um, my name is Simon Gladman. I'm a uh, <clears throat> one of the original developers of uh, the Genomics Virtual Laboratory, which incorporates Galaxy. And um, I've been working on uh, um, Galaxy Australia now for quite some time. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about what we call UseGalaxy.Star, which is a, uh, a collaboration between the various large public Galaxy servers around the world to make uh, the user experience on those Galaxy servers a bit more friendly and uh, open and try and make the global Galaxy experience available for everybody. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so there's been a long history of public Galaxy servers in uh, around the world. Uh, the first one, of course, was uh, Galaxy Main which is based at usegalaxy.org. This is run by the Galaxy Project itself. It's hosted at various different institutions in the US and has quite a large uh, compute backend um, from all over the US. It has very many users and constantly has a large queue and runs a large number of jobs every day. And in fact, sometimes if you submit a job on Galaxy Main, it could take you two or three hours to get through the queue before your job even starts running. So. Uh, then they decided that, well, maybe more public service would be would be handy. And uh, we decided that we would um, create some new public servers in Australia. So a while back, probably six years ago or so, we, um, when Galaxy was still in its infancy, we uh, created Galaxy Queensland and then shortly followed by Galaxy Melbourne and uh, then Galaxy, Galaxy Toot, which we probably use for running workshops. And these, um, Galaxy servers were set up just in uh, Melbourne and Brisbane, just basically to support the Melbourne and Brisbane communities. But uh, we soon found that we were getting a lot of public access from uh, other places around Australia and indeed around the world. And so they became generally globally public Galaxy servers. And of course, there are a lot of other um, publicly available Galaxy servers in Australia, but the two main ones were Galaxy Queensland and Galaxy Melbourne. Okay, as Gareth has already talked about, we are. Uh, we spent um, a bit of time earlier this year um, amalgamating all the resources and uh, compute for Galaxy Queensland, Galaxy Melbourne and Galaxy Two to create Galaxy Australia. Um, this is still a work in progress at the moment. Uh, it's based out of Brisbane, 
um, but there are nodes of it will be um, in Melbourne and pro possibly other places and um, I'll talk about that how that's all going to work a bit later on but obviously you can get to the new Galaxy Australia server at usegalaxy.org.au and if you uh, recall from my one of my earlier slides um, that bears a striking resemblance to uh, usegalaxy.org which is Galaxy Main in the US Okay, so we weren't the only ones creating public Galaxy servers. There are a lot. And um, as you can see here, there are over 90 public Galaxy servers around the globe at the moment, and they're still increasing. Um, there's a list of them on the Galaxy Project website. However, one of the issues is that they all run different versions of Galaxy. Some of them are quite old, and some of them are brand new. Um, they all have different numbers of tools installed, they all have different types of tools installed, they have different versions of the tools, they all have different reference data sets and, and available backend um, reference data. So, so this causes a lot of user confusion, especially when um, someone from the Netherlands is running on their Galaxy server that may be overloaded or something, so they, they, they decide to go and use the one in Sri Lanka and suddenly none of the tools that they expect to see are there and none of the reference data is there. And so um, the idea, um, yes, so that, that can be a problem. And of course, there's a lot of duplication of effort in trying to keep everything up to date in trying to keep the, uh, the uh, version of Galaxy the same and keep all the tools installed and update reference data and stuff all the time. So it's quite a lot of effort that goes into it. So we got together and um, we had a Galaxy Australasia meeting in 2017. We had, um, we were lucky enough to have the key people from the US, Europe um, come visit us. And uh, people from who run the Galaxy, the, the really big Galaxy server in Europe were here. And also one of the Galaxy PIs, as well as a few other people from the Galaxy project came out. And we, uh, we got together in, in an office here and we sat around and said, wouldn't it be cool if uh, we could somehow get these public servers to be similar to one another and, and work together and share resources. And so we agreed to work together to support the publicly available galaxies and do as much as possible together. And so the idea behind uh, usegalaxy.star was born. So what is usegalaxy.star? Well, basically it's just a group of public galaxy servers who got together and we wanted to present a similar experience to users no matter where they were. So um, we want to have a per person who logs in from Australia be presented with a, the same interface, the same tools, the same versions, the same reference data as someone who logs in from Europe or someone who logs in from the US. And the idea is that we're going to guarantee a minimum service. So we're not going to prescribe that this is what your Galaxy server must look like, this is what your Galaxy server must have, um, but we will um, and which data you, et cetera. But we will guarantee a minimum service. So we will say that we will have BWA version 0.7.12, and we will have um, spades 3.5.1, for example. And that uh, no matter which server you go to, those tools will be available. We will also guarantee that we will have reference data. And in fact, uh, we've done a little trick, which I'll talk about later, which guarantees that we all have the same reference data. Um, the, the other idea is to make it reproducible so that um, uh, if you run an analysis on Galaxy Europe, you should be able to take that analysis, um, upload your history to Galaxy Australia and run the same analysis and get the same results. And we will provide uh, training materials globally between the three, the three main use Galaxy.star servers via the Galaxy training network to make that available and, uh, and um, for, for teaching purposes. And also we will uh, have data sets available as well. Um, so this initiative was mainly from the Europeans, uh, the US and us. However, we've garnered a bit of interest from uh, other people who've heard about this initiative. And so perhaps in the future, we'll have a server in um, who join us from South Africa, one from Belgium and uh, other places around the world. Okay, so how are we going to try and uh, manage all of this stuff? Well, we're going to try and manage it with community assets and repositories. So um, we're going to have uh, a collection of 
uh, tool list, a collection of training materials, and a collection of uh, reference data that's available to everybody in the Use Galaxy Dots uh, organization. And, but we're not going to prescribe what hardware resources you're going to have to have or how big your computer needs to be. As long as you can, can consistently run Galaxy and keep it up, if you can link into our resources, you can become part of the Use Galaxy Dots ecosystem. Okay, so how are we going to do go about sharing these tools? So, and making sure that we can have a minimum tool set of, um, and with versions and everything between the different Galaxy servers. So the idea is that uh, we would have a shared repository of tool lists um, in using GitHub or GitLab or somewhere like that. Um, and and this, would, this would have uh, a file for the minimum tools. Now, um, Galaxy is pretty cool. We can um, store the tools that are installed in a YAML file and at any time we like, we can just rerun that YAML file on our server and the tools listed in that YAML file would be either installed or updated or just checked to make sure they're still working on our Galaxy server. And so by having our community repository of these tools, we can um, then link into it from our Galaxy servers and just make sure that everybody is running the minimum tools. And then, of course, we can keep collections of extra tools for things like metagenomics and proto proteomics and metabolomics, et cetera. And the idea is that, um, well, what we have been doing so far is that the curation and maintenance of these tools and versions is a community effort. So people from uh, Galaxy Main and Galaxy Europe and Galaxy Australia will all, all work on these things together. And um, we will have a file um, which will have trusted tools in it, um, things that are put out by the Galaxy project themselves or the, um, the tools um, IUC, which is the, uh, the tool shared police, I guess. Um, and the tools that they produce are fairly well trusted. They're guaranteed to work on Galaxy. And so we would have um, some kind of automatic upgrade or installation of those trusted tools. But the idea is that we're not going to prescribe exactly what you have to have. Um, we will still very much allow for local specializations of different tools. And we can have tools installed in Australia that aren't installed at other places. But we would guarantee that we would support the minimum tool, the minimum global tools. Okay, so I talked about a little bit of a trick that we, we talked about with um, uh, what we want to do with our reference data. And we've come across this thing called uh, the CERN Virtual Managed File System, which is a distributed file system which uses a, uh, a, a network of interconnected data servers and data caching. Etc. And so it becomes a distributed file system that can be mounted on any machine anywhere. And so um, what, what happens at the moment is um, the Galaxy Main in the US has what we call the tier zero CVMFS server. And it has all the uh, canonical copies of the reference data and all of the tool indices uh, on it. And then we've built two other servers, one um, in Europe and one in Australia, that link into that tier zero server and um, pretty much they become a conduit to the reference data and they do local caching and a lot of smart moving of data around. Um, but it also allows for local specialization and then the European uh, Galaxy hooks into the European CVMFS server and the Australian Galaxy hooks into the Australian CVMFS server. However, the data that's presented to each of those galaxies is exactly the same. It just uses some clever networking and caching in the background to make it all seamless. And it works beautifully. So at the moment, uh, each of the used galaxy servers around the world having access to exactly the same reference data and um, tool indices, which is fantastic. And it also removes a lot of the administration burden for the people who run these servers in the fact that we don't all have to download the data, index it for all the different tools, which can take a long time and use a lot of compute resources. One of the other things we really wanted to concentrate on was uh, the look and feel of how the use, uh, use Galaxy.star service should, should look. Um, and we all decided that we would try and run the latest stable Galaxy release at all times. So um, as soon as the, uh, the new Galaxy release is, is out, we would um, plan or make some plans to upgrade in a, a minimum possible time. And the, idea, the other idea is that we'll present the user with a similar tool list, but in the same layout, so that the tools are found in the same place on each of these servers. 
um, the idea is that we would be able to run all of the Galaxy Train Network's core tutorials on all of these servers. So if you're in Australia and you want to run a Galaxy tutorial, you can just log into usegalaxy.org.au and you, you're guaranteed that it's going to work. And we'll have the same testing and training data sets available, same reference data available, and same tools available. And it will work. Okay. And I'll talk a little bit about what our future plans are. So I've talked a little bit about um, how it all links in and how it all works now. But this is what we want to try and do in the future. So at the moment, we all have to have all these tools installed locally on each of our each of our computers, each of our servers. One of the things we thought about doing, we thought would be really cool, since we've got this uh, capability of um, a distributed file system like CERN uh, VMFS, that we would um, upload singularity containers of each of the tools, and then the galaxies in the usegalaxy.star ecosystem would just point to those singularity containers for each um, for their dependencies. So if I wanted to run BWA in Melbourne, I could just log into usegalaxy.org.au and it would talk to the repository of singularity containers and then it would run that container for BWA and didn't I would get BWA run in Melbourne, but it'd be exactly the same BWA that would run in the US and in Europe. And that would make it very, very easy to keep tool installations and upgrades the same around or around the globe. And, and once again, share resources and minimize the administration burden. Okay, so what do we want to do for references? Um, at the moment, uh, all the reference data and the tool indexing is handled by um, the usegalaxy.org staff out of the US. And um, if we want to have any additions or changes to it, we need to request that they do it for us. Um, this is not ideal because uh, they're quite busy running their massive Galaxy server. And so we want to move to a community-based model, similar to what we have done with um, the way Galaxy project itself is moving. It's no longer a single US project, it's now a global project. And so the idea is to move uh, the responsibility for the reference data and collections into a community-based model. Um, and this, and we also would like to very much improve the metadata availability and uh, improve the data provenance of uh, reference data, and make it more, much more available within Galaxy to the users. Okay, so our proposed Global architecture would be that we would have as many used Galaxy servers around um, the world, each of them with their own local architecture for compute. However, um, the idea is that we would all hook into a globally, uh, globally distributed community managed reference data set and list of um, tool containers. And so, basically, every Galaxy server in the used Galaxy ecosystem would be pretty much the same, no matter where they are. Um, we figured out a way of producing different views for some of this data. So um, uh, usegalaxy.eu currently has two other views that you can see, one's for um, high C and the other one's for metagenomics. And uh, we're working on something similar down here in Australia, and I'm pretty sure the US are as well. But it doesn't really matter, it all runs um, from the usegalaxy uh, structure and uses this globally globally distributed um, backend. One of the other things we're trying to work on is uh, bring your own compute. So um, at the moment, Galaxy Australia is based out of Brisbane. We're slowly uh, adding in resources out of Melbourne and Sydney into uh, the Galaxy Australia. Um, and I know the Galaxy Europe are also adding in Czech and Dutch resources into Galaxy Europe. Galaxy Europe runs out of Freiburg in, in Germany. Um, the goal is, but our ultimate goal in this area is to allow the user or group to add their own computer storage resources. Um, so you can sign on to Galaxy, say, I have um, HPC available at my institution, and here is my authentication for HPC, and then that would automatically get used by Galaxy. And then we can do this by um, dynamic job allocation. And hopefully, we'll be able to tell where the user's from and which resources they can use. And uh, the dynamic job allocator will just automatically send their Galaxy jobs to their own computer if they wish. And of course, if their resources are full, then they can use the, uh, the um, common resources. 
So this is an example. This is the Australian architecture. I won't go into it in great detail, but everything on this side of this dotted line is located in Brisbane. However, uh, but we are able, using some tricks and techniques that are available to Galaxy, um, create other clusters in Melbourne and Sydney and then link them back into Galaxy itself, which is really, really cool. And uh, it all operates seamlessly from a user's point of view. And of course, our ultimate goal uh, with this use Galaxy thing is to have a single sign-on and that we would have a global Galaxy web server running. Um, everyone just logs into that one web server, well, not web server, but one web service, and uh, it would use the local computer data for wherever you happen to be. And of course, all of this is quite a large effort. Um, we've had a lot of discussions between uh, Galaxy Australia and the Galaxy project itself in the US and Galaxy Europe, and a lot of people have been involved. And yeah, thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you, Simon. Um, so maybe Gareth, if you want to put on your video, we'll go through some questions. We've got quite a few questions there now. Um, so I'll just read these out. So the first ones are about, well, starting from the end. So does BYO Compute have the same have the same OpenStack or AWS E2 requirement? Those questions. Uh, no, uh, we can use something called uh, Pulsar and uh, and Conda at the moment, so that. As long as you have credentials to log into your um, your HPC or whatever your compute happens to be, whether it be cloud or um, any other kind of large compute, uh, if, as long as you have a user account, we can add that to the um, add that to your user um, authentications in the Galaxy server itself, and then Galaxy will um, send down the um, a list of the job that needs to run. It will automatically install the dependencies in the back end on your local compute, run your job, and then send the um, results and data back up to the Galaxy server itself. And um, at the moment, it seems to happen all seamlessly. We've um, done a lot of work on this. Uh, we've got um, jobs running in Melbourne and Sydney out of the, the Brisbane server without you even really knowing what's happening. Okay, great. Um, next two questions are somewhat related. So the first of them is how do users ask for new tools or reference data to be added to usegalaxy.star? And the somewhat related question is, is there support to get tools developed by Australian researchers accessible on Galaxy Australia and in other Galaxy worldwide? Um, so the answer to the first question, uh, we, can always install um, tools onto our local galaxies. So as one of the administrators of Galaxy Australia, I can always install um, a tool into Galaxy Australia without a problem. And um, if the same tool gets installed in, um, or oh, it's used for groups popular, and the same tool gets installed in the Galaxy uh, main or Galaxy Europe, then um, between the three, we have a conversation, we say, this is becoming a popular tool. We should add it to our minimum requirements, and we'll just add it to the uh, to, to the tool list repository, and it will be automatically distributed amongst the Galaxy servers. Um, as for tool development, um, we've been running a fair bit of training recently um, with uh, uh, QFAB and uh, and Melbourne Bioinformatics, and uh, looking at teaching people how to uh, wrap tool dependencies into the um, Galaxy um, software stack and also how to um, build tool interfaces for each of the Galaxy tools and it's, it's not a very difficult process. Um, we can obviously do it for more popular ones. Um, there are probably two or three hundred people globally that spend a fair majority of their, of their time um, doing this a lot. So there are always being new tools added to Galaxies everywhere. And, they can be available in their, the Galaxy's version of the App Store, which is the tool shed, and we can then get them installed on any Galaxy anywhere in the world. And I might just add to that, Jeff and Simon. So right now, please, if you do have a tool, approach us through the help page 
and write to us shortly on Galaxy Australia as this is a developing project. We will be making a web form available on Galaxy Australia where you can approach us with a tool request uh, where we'll require some minimal details on what you want to use the tool for, where did you source it, uh, is there any example data available for it to allow us to test its functionality and, and we're hoping that process will uh, streamline the addition of new tools into Galaxy Australia. Great, thank you. Um, we have a couple of questions about sign-on and authentication. So any thoughts about using AAF in Australia and Edugame internationally for authentication? Uh, short answer, yes, there have been some thoughts on using that <laughs> for sign-on um, and that is uh, within the scope of the BioDevil project to investigate AAF as a sign-on mechanism for Galaxy Australia. Um, and just to add to that, Galaxy also has a number of um, open authentication protocols built in and so you can use things like your GitHub account or whatever to log into Galaxy as well. Um, one of the things, because these are publicly available services, we can't, we don't really want to restrict our, our sign-ins to people just with AAF, for example. Um, we can segregate users depending and give them different levels of resources based on their on their, their logins, but we don't particularly want to restrict um, the logins on these servers to just one particular set of people. Okay, um, just a quick question here about quota on Galaxy Australia. What's the quota for storage and analysis for each user? And how fast is the upload feature to upload user data into Galaxy? Simon. Okay, uh, so <laughs> uh, the, the quota on, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what it is on Galaxy Australia at the moment. Uh, it was 100 gigabytes per user, but of course that's entirely negotiable. If you uh, start using it and decide that 100 gigabytes isn't enough, and if you write to us using the help um, email, we will um, contact you and talk to you about extending your quota. And it's not unusual for us to grant um, large amounts of quota on a temporary basis, depending on what you're doing, and uh, etc., or even just increasing it. Uh, uploading data, it's as fast as your internet connection. So if you're using an ADSL2 connection from home, it's going to be really, really slow. However, if you're using an institutional internet connection, it'll run as fast as the disks can suck the data up, basically. So, um, most of the time I can send, well, not me personally, but I've heard of people sending data to it at 50, 55, 100 megabytes a second. So um, sometimes it can still take overnight to upload gigabytes and gigabytes of data. Um, great. Um, I've got, a his, I guess, a bit of a historical question here. So how does the new Galaxy Australia overlap with a previous RDS omics project? Uh, is this the Stepsis? Yes. Um, ADRPI project? So, um, at the moment, uh, there is a, another Gal public Galaxy server Australia for, um, called ABRPI for the Australian, I can't remember what the acronym stands for now. But basically, uh, that is a, a Galaxy server that was set up for a specific project. Um, the tools and uh, the Galaxy version of that, that uh, server are a little bit outdated now, but the the list of tools that were supported on ABRPI uh, will be supported on Galaxy Australia. And so um, there is, if you start using that, so the new server instead of ABRPI, then everything should be the same. And if it isn't, then please uh, use the help email and we will rectify that immediately. Great, thank you. I think we've got time for one more question. Um, this is a technical one. Um, Singularity is increasingly popular containerization tool. Is this the preferred container technology chosen by the Galaxy team for Galaxy remote compute going forward? Uh, so we've done a lot of work on how to get tools into Galaxy easily and we um, also, part of the, the Galaxy team has also been, and the Galaxy community is also heavily involved in another um, 
a global open source community called um, Conda and Bioconda. And a lot of us spend time writing tools or wrapping tools for uh, Conda, which is a just makes it very easy to install tools on a command line system with all of the dependencies and a sandbox environment without messing up anything else that's running on your computer at the time. And one of the things that we put a lot of effort into was if you wrap a tool for Bioconda and get it tested and merged into the main repository, you will automatically um, get a Docker container, a Rocket container, and a Singularity container. Um, Docker is um, equivalent um, container system to Singularity, except that uh, a lot of HPC um, administrators don't particularly like it as perceived uh, security problems, but they think that uh, Singularity is much better. Um, they're, they're pretty much equivalent though, and so uh, Galaxy for us, just so we are not running random Docker containers all over the world, we decided that we would go down the Singularity path and uh, just hopefully have it a little bit more secure. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Um, and uh, you're talking about Bioconda and Conda. Um, I'll just mention actually just now that our next webinar, which will be on the 12th of July, will be about Bioconda and Conda, and that'll be presented by Tom Cudahy from QFAB. Um, okay, so I'll just uh, share my screen again. So while I'm doing that, or just before I do that, thank you very much for Simon and Gareth for your time today. Um, thanks for all the attendees as well for coming along and listening. Um, hopefully you can see my slides. Um, yes, yeah, so as I said, the, the next webinar, we're aiming to have one webinar, at least one webinar a month in this series as we go forward um, into the future. So 12th of July, um, if you're interested in registering for this, um, uh, here we go. Um, just visit our website. So it's embleabr.org.au slash webinars, and you'll find that there's a registration link for that particular webinar there. Um, we're very, very happy for ideas for webinars um, as we move forward. So again, feel free to uh, email us at webinars at embleabr.org.au, um, and we'd love to talk about your ideas. So. Um, Thanks again uh, to Simon and Gareth for coming along and speaking to us today. Uh, thank you to everyone for attending and making the time to attend this webinar. Um, it's been recorded um, and the slides and the recording will be made available through the Amber ABR YouTube channel, um, hopefully within about a week. Um, and we'll send an email to everyone who's come along today with those links when they're ready. Um, and just before we leave, I just wanted to um, acknowledge the, uh, uh, the groups that make this possible. So um, at Emble ABR, we'd like to acknowledge the support of uh, Bioplatforms uh, Bio Australia and the University of Melbourne. And uh, as I said, Nectar um, and Anne's Nectar RDS, who are co-partnering with us on this uh, webinar series, would like to acknowledge the support of um, NCRIS um, through the NCRIS program. So um, just as this webinar closes, uh, there'll be a short survey. So uh, we'd really love it if you could just take a minute to complete that for us. Um, so thanks again for coming along and we look forward to seeing you in a month. Thanks. Bye-bye.